How do people make decisions? Many people believe three critical decisions determine your quality of life. What to love, what to do, and what to hope for. I, however, argue that understanding how to make decisions comes first. Only then can you truly value what you love, find satisfaction in what you do, and ensure that what you hope for is realistic. So today we are here with Kim Kelly, the mind behind predictable probabilities. How can AI transform the way people work, earn, learn, and live? So Kim, what inspired you to write this book? Uh, honestly, my family, my life, my, uh, the companies I've worked for, I think just my life experiences. Mm. It, uh, my life experiences brought the context for the book and where all of the Mm, the stories come from, mm -hmm. but the why is uh, maybe I have a little bit of a, a superhero thing going on that I just want to inform, you know, the next generation about how they can use technology to really level up life in a way that maybe older generations didn't like, so they don't think it's possible, or maybe they're just afraid of. So yeah, maybe that's really it. I have like a savior complex. I don't know. I love that. Well, we need somebody to teach the new generation about AI. So yeah. that is perfect. Something more than um, how to use TikTok, yes. but how does TikTok use you? Maybe that's That's a better. good point. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's a good way to phrase it. Um, what would you say was the most challenging part of this whole writing process? Uh, you know, when you write a book, you, ha for, at least for me, my the hard part was taking... Kim conversation style out of the book. And thank goodness for my co-writer, who is just an experienced person at writing books and basically helping people with lots of ideas, put them into a readable, <laughs> a readable book. So I think that was really the hardest struggle for me is, is making it a book mm -hmm. and not just a very long winded conversation. <laughs> Not just all yeah. Kim's thoughts on yes. the pages. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, that does sound hard. Um, what real life experiences do you have that helped inspire this book? I know you talked a little bit about your family, but is there anything else, more specifically the AI part of it? Well, everything in the book is my life experience. Uh, there is nothing that's not. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I, I really, it was really important to me to make sure that people could think of AI as a life tool, mm -hmm. not just AI as a computer, not as uh, a like a distant kind of widget that's, you know, you, it, some people think of AI, let me put it this way. Some people think of AI as like a coffee machine. Mm -hmm. I can buy it and use it when I want to and kind of leave it alone when I don't. But I think once people read the book, they'll understand that uh, AI can be used for so many different benefits based on how you engage with and use different tools that use AI. Uh, so yeah, everything in the book is from my work, personal experiences, and it really is just intended to show people how in each one of those situations that I have been in as a chief HR officer, as an HR consultant, as an operations leader, for uh, the Fortune 50, as a mom, as a sister, as a, 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 as a daughter, like you find all of these different use cases in life where, gosh, if I had something as sophisticated and knowledgeable and resourceful as what AI can be, it could have made decision making a whole lot easier. It could make it just could have made life a whole lot easier. It probably could have saved me lots of money too, right? You would have been future ready. Yes. I would have been future ready. Future I love that. Yeah, yeah, I would have. So what would you say is kind of the central message of this book? Don't be afraid of AI. <laughs> That's, That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. And, and take time to educate yourself on what AI is. I think those are just the, the two messages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of what you would hope the reader would take away is don't be afraid of AI? Is there anything else you would want them to take away from reading your book? Maybe curiosity. Uh, and a sense of, of um, genuine, yeah, just genuine curiosity about what is this thing that people are labeling as AI 
Um, how do I break into this world of different tools that build up to AI? Uh, and then where does it fit into my, my life? Like there's a, a few, uh, actually, there's a lot of segments in each one of the chapters where I explain a place in, in life where if AI was used as its intended use case for good, not for bad, but for good, uh, you, 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 me, mm -hmm. everybody would have just a different set of information. Um, and, and that part to it is what I want people just to take away. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like if I was sitting at work and I was really bugged out about this and, you know, in from 1990 until I didn't even know, probably last year, we all thought like the internet was the way to solve our problems. Like oh, yeah. you type in a search and, oh, now I totally know. And now I'm wiser. Well, and but, that's TikTok for everybody too. Yes, yes, yes. you're totally right. Uh, so now it's like, how do we, how do we take this superficial level of data and now really get into intentional questions, uh, basically looking forward into consequences, unintended consequences. That's the kind of, I guess, aha mm -hmm. that I hope everybody gets. I love that. That is very good.